Welcome to the part 2 of the Modbus communication with S7-1200 PLC. In part 1 we have learned how to configure and program S7-1200 PLC to communicate with extension IO module and read analog input signals or Modbus communication protocol. In case you missed to watch the part 1 of this tutorial series, I would request you guys to please watch the part 1 and come back to the part 2. The link for the part 1 video is in the description box. In today's session, we will program S7-1200 PLC to read digital inputs and write digital outputs of the extension module using Modbus communication protocol. Before starting today's session, I will request you guys to please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of the newly uploaded videos. We have connected some LEDs at the digital relay outputs of this module. We have connected two selected switches at the input of this extension IO module. We will program the S7-1200 PLC using the TO portal software to read the status of these selected switches and turn on or off these LED lights. First of all, we will open the same project of the part number one in the TO portal. We will copy the MB master function and paste it on the ladder. Now we have two MB master function in the program. In the first MB master function, the mod is zero as we want to read the data registers over the mod bus. If we see the data register table for the mod bus communication, you can see that the registers of the discrete input contacts starts from 1001. So we will enter 1001 on the data register input to read the status of the switches connected at the input terminals of the IO module. Next we will leave everything as it is and there is no need to change anything else. In the second Modbus DB master we will change the mod to 1 as we want this function to write the status of the outputs of this IO module. This means that this function can now send the data over the Modbus to turn on or off the LEDs. Next we have to change the data addresses as we want to write the output registers. If we see the data register table for the Modbus communication, you, you can see that the registers of the discrete output coils starts from 1. So we will enter 1 in the data address. Next we have to give this function a request signal. For the read function, clock bit is sending the request signal every one second. We will change the clock bit 5 Hz frequency to send 5 request signals to the read function to speed up the things. We will use the done bit of the read function to send request to this write function. So we will open the data block number 3 and add a new row in it. Next we will create a new tag MB master read done bit with the boolean data type. We will go back to the OB1 and here we will drag and drop the MB master read done bit at the done output of the MB master read function. Now when this function have read the data or the mod bus, this done bit will turn on. We will copy this bit and paste it at the request input of the MB master function to start writing the data over the mod bus. Now when the clock pulse comes at the request input of the mod bus function, it will start reading the register of the digital inputs. When the reading is done, this bit will send the request to the mod bus function to write the digital output register. Next we have to assign the data tags to the data pointers of both read and write functions. We will open the data block db3 and create digital input tag with the array of 2 and the data type as boolean. Next we will create the digital output tag with the array of 2 and data type same boolean. As you can see that we have created two input data tags to show the status of the two selected switches and two output tag will be used to turn on or off the digital outputs of the extension IO card. Next we will come back to the OB1 and select the digital input array tag in the data block 3 for the data pointer for the read function. 
Next, we will select the digital output data array tag in the data block 3 for the pointer for the read function. Now the MB master function will read the status of the digital inputs, the switch is connected at the input of the IO module. This modbus function will write the status of the digital outputs, the LED is connected to the relays of the IO module. By taking the data from the digital output data array tags and sending this data to the extension IO module over the modbus communication. Next, we will insert network 3 and insert normal open contact and assign it one of the digital input tags from the data block 3. Next, we will insert an output coil and assign it one of the digital output tags from the data block number 3. Now, we have a simple logic. When the digital input 0 turns on by turning on the selector switch, it will turn on the digital output and the LED will turn on. Now the programming is completed. We will upload this data into the PLC and monitor the data logic. As you can see that both read and write functions are working properly. If we turn on the switch connected at the digital input 0, it will close the contact and turn on the digital output coil and our LED will turn on. Now if we open the data block 3 and monitor the data tags, you can see that if I turn on the digital input 1, its tag turns true. And when we turn off the selector switch, its tag turns to the false. So this is how we can communicate extension IO modules or any other sensor transmitter over the Modbus communication with the S7-1200 PLC. That's the end of the today's tutorial. I hope you like it. Do share, like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for more upcoming video tutorials. Till next time, take care and goodbye.